Hi, good morning everybody and welcome to this morning's Library Adventures Live. So my name's Amanda and I'm one of the librarians who work for Kirkley's Library Service and I hope everybody's doing okay today. We're still living in very strange times of course and we're back in another lockdown and spending an awful lot of time at home. So I do think it's important that we all do whatever we can to keep ourselves cheerful. Now I don't know if you had a lot of snow last week but I did where I live. So one of the things that I did to cheer myself up was go out to build a snowman and I thought I'd show you a picture of him this morning. So here he is. There is my snowman. <laughs> my snowman. So I hope that brought a little bit of a smile to your face this morning. And I know that getting outside and getting some fresh air really helps to, to keep me happy. Another thing that keeps me happy, of course, is this. And looking forward to Library Adventures Live every Tuesday at 11am. So it's lovely to be here with you this morning. So obviously, as I've said, I'm working from home at the moment. Uh, but if you're watching, it would be really lovely to know where you are uh, and who you are and where you're watching from. So if you can, uh, feel free to type in some comments uh, on Facebook or YouTube. Uh, let me know where you are and we'll try and give you a shout out at some point. And don't forget, as we go along, you can also type in any questions you might have for today's guest. And we'll try and get through as many of those as we can. OK, just before we meet today's guest, though, I just wondered if anybody had watched last week's Library Adventures Live with Joe Loring Fisher. Uh, last week, it was a really lovely session and Joe read to us from her beautiful books, Maisie's Scrapbook and Taking Time. She also did a draw along and showed us how to create one of the characters from her book as well. Jo also set us a really good challenge too. She wanted us to try and write a poem along the same lines as the one in her book, Taking Time, which is all about being aware and being mindful of the things that are happening around us. So Jo asked us if we're out and about getting some exercise, could we take the time to look around and listen really carefully and write about all the things that we see and hear? Or if you prefer to stay indoors, she said that you could write about the things that you see and hear around you there too. Or you might decide that you'd like to do both. So when you've done that, when you've been out and about, or you've, you've had a, a listen and a look around you indoors, try and put those, the words that come to mind together as a poem. And when you've written your poem, do send it in to us at our email address, which is lal at kirklees.gov.uk. We'd love to get as many poems as we can. And if you send the poems in and give us your permission, we can put them on our website um, as well, which would be really lovely. And also, if you um, watched Joe's session last week, um, if you did the draw along, you could send your drawings in to us as well, and we could put those on our website. And that would be really, really lovely. Um, and don't forget, if you want to catch up on Joe's session or any other Library Adventures Live session, you just need to go to our website, which is kirkleyslibraries.co.uk forward slash lal, and you can catch up on all our adventures there. OK, so that's a little bit about me, um, a little bit about last week's session. But I'm sure everybody's really excited to meet this morning's guest. Uh, so we'll, we'll crack on with that. I know I'm really excited to meet him because I've been really lucky uh, and I managed to have a little uh, sneak preview read of his brand new book, um, The Spybrarian. And I absolutely loved it. It's really funny. So let's bring our special guest in today. It's the author of The Spybrarian and it's the brilliant author, John Mayhew. So here he is. Good morning, John. Hello. Hi. Hey, got me hands Hi, right. lovely to meet you. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> it's difficult, isn't it? I'm always getting them the wrong way around. Yeah. 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 How I love the are snowman, you? by the way. Pardon? I love the snowman, by the way. Oh, yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, I just thought I'd yeah. share that with everybody this morning. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, I'm How fine. I'm fine. I'm all good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm um, sitting here on the uh, on the Wirral. Um, which is uh, not far from Liverpool and uh, not far from Chester and not far from North Wales. It's sort of in between all three of them. And uh, yeah, it's uh, a little bit windy, but 
not too rainy at the moment so that's good oh very uh, good you're, you're lucky i've got quite a lot of rain here this morning all the snow's gone i've just got a bit of rain now hmm. yeah yeah no no i'm all snug down in my room anyway so me, me work wow. room so that's good <laughs> Good stuff. Well, it's lovely to see you this morning. So, what what have you got in store for us this morning, then, John? What are you? What are you right. Going well, to I, thought I, I, I was going to tell everyone the the story of um, how I became a writer, really, which very much involves reading and very much involves libraries. Um, and I'm going to introduce you to uh, my new book, The Spy Brarian, and Fabulous. some of the characters in there, and talk about spies in general and um yeah we'll probably run out of time that <laughs> <laughs> um, and hopefully i'll set you a few challenges as well so set everyone a few challenges so fantastic sounds wonderful yeah good mm -hmm. stuff mm -hmm. should i kick off yes indeed yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, good. all right so hello everyone um so as amanda said my name is john mayhew and um, I'm the author of a number of books, actually. Um, and I thought I'd just give you a, um, a, a heads up on, on those as well before I got to my other, uh, my latest book. So I've been a writer for around about 10 years, really. Um, my first book was published in 2010, and that was Mortlock, uh, which is a spooky supernatural adventure. So if you're uh, in year, six or seven that might be the book for you um and that was followed up by the demon collector and a book called the bone hill curse as well I don't have a copy of it at the moment um and they're all they're all um, spooky supernatural adventures uh, set in victorian london um lots of mystery lots of sort of puzzles and things really interesting and then the second um series that i wrote um was um the Monster Odyssey series, which some of you might know. So the Eye of Neptune and the Wrath of the Lizard Lord. I love these covers. They're really like, uh, um, and the Curse of the Ice Serpent and the Venom of the Scorpion as well. They're great covers. Though. They're really good. And um, and they are, they're, they're, um, they're not really spooky or supernatural. They're, they're kind of more action and adventure they're historical they're set in around about 1815 and they've got sea monsters and pirates and the only way i could describe them really is they're a bit like um pirates of the caribbean um mixed up with uh, jurassic park uh, with a little bit of james bond thrown in so there are, there are spies and things in those but they're old-fashioned uh out on the high seas and um yeah, all kinds of adventures and sword fights and monsters, sea monsters and all kinds of strange things going on there. If um, so, if, that, if that's your cup of tea, then the, that's what I uh, that's what I offer there. And they're all available in your libraries, so um, you can get them there. Um, and then, yeah, my latest book is the Spiderarian, and I'm so. So chuffed about this book i really am i'm really really pleased with it um it's a book i wrote a, quite a long time ago when i was when i was writing these and and the spooky books i, I came up with this idea um but the trouble was that all all my um my publishers wanted me to write spooky and adventure books and i wanted to write a funny book and and so it kind of it it kept getting in edged out all the time and then eventually i managed to uh, to get it to get it written so I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about this um and then i'll tell you a bit about the inspirations for all of this so um the spybrarian is about a boy called kian reader k e a so it's, it looks like he's uh, he, he, he's okay with reading but he just doesn't enjoy reading at all and he's also doesn't like reading because his mum's new boyfriend is a keen very keen reader and is always going on at him to try and uh, improve his, his reading and things and then one day through a um, a strange series of events kian ends up in uh, the local library uh, in a town called hinderton um 
which is a kind of made up kind of northern town it could be it could be near where i live or it could be near where you live really it all, all depends and uh and he ends up in in hinderton central library and um he stumbles across a fight like a kung fu fight between the head librarian and a local author and the uh, children's author and in the middle of it all this strange bottle of blue liquid splashes all over him and it's actually called uh, the super reader serum that, that's what splashed on him and um and it soaks into his skin and into his mouth and and he, he ingests this super reader serum and it means that whatever he reads in terms of non-fiction whatever he reads he knows all about it for 24 hours so he suddenly has this super reading power um and he gets drawn into the world of um, of the spybrarians the special library service the secret library service um who are librarians but also they have this other secret life where they have to fight against an evil organization that is basically trying to make the world a not very clever or a not very nice place and um and so he finds himself launched on an adventure against the fellowship and i'll talk a bit a bit more about that later on um and i'll do a reading at the end as well of uh, of the scene where where kian ends up um in the in the library so uh, so that's something to look forward to but i thought what i'd do first is to uh, is talk a little bit about how I became a writer. Before I do that, I want to set you a little challenge. Um, it's always good to, uh, you know, to, to sort of um, look inspiration in your writing. And often people say to me, oh, you know, where do you get your ideas from? Where do you get your inspiration for your writing? And one of them is just from the world around me. D really, really simple. I always think about writing fiction is a little bit not quite but a little bit like telling lies or making fibs up about something so um you know i might say well this cup whoops where's it gone this cup uh has got a super potion in it that makes me super strong yeah so you can build a story from that um and um and so if you look behind me i'm just going to get out my chair and, uh, if you look behind me here, up on the shelf, there are all, all kinds of and in for a few, this lamp, for instance, maybe it was used by pirates, maybe it was used um, in a, in a a campsite on a safari in the you know african plains and um, there are all kinds of things that, that 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 lamp could have been used for um and if you just look at that object you can make a story up about that object and um, there are lots of other objects up here there's a horseshoe yeah maybe you want to write a story about a horse or a magic horseshoe I don't know, a magnetic horseshoe, horseshoe that gives you superpowers. Could be anything, really. Um, so there are lots of objects here. There's the lamp, there's the horseshoe. There's, can you see the, there's an owl at the end here. Yeah, a, a white owl. So you might write a story about a white owl. A tambourine. Again, you know, maybe you want to be in a band or maybe you, uh, you know, maybe your, your story is about, um, about you know a, a tambourine and, and and how that changed your life or who did it belong to before you got it or yeah there's a bunch of keys here i love these keys They're great yeah if i was in your classroom now and you were sat there i'd let you i'd let you pick these keys up and just feel the weight of them and how you know how big those keys are and um, you know what what is that a key to what kind of door does it open yeah okay so that's um there's a whole bunch of them there are five keys there five doors what does eat what's behind each door could be magic could be could be like a, a, a secret castle it could be a, an underground base it could be all kinds of things 
you might want to write about the keys. As a not, whoa, that's kind of won't be able to hang this back up now. The other thing that might happen is any of these might drop off the shelf at any minute, so that bit, so I think as well. Um, there's a rocking horse here. Um, is it a horn? If that starts rocking when I'm just talking to you, down again, good story. Yeah. Um, there's a top hat here and a silk scarf and a, a, a bride's veil as well. And, uh, you know, story, there might be a story there about the top hat, a magician, um, maybe, a, you know, a wedding that went wrong or, um, or something like that. There's a football there. There's some headphones. Um, what can you write a story about? Any of these objects, the big axe here as well. <laughs> Scary. Yep. So any of these things you might be able to write a, write a story about. And your challenge, should you choose to accept it, is to, as I'm talking, just make a note of one of those objects and, uh, and just, just be thinking about what kind of, uh, what kind of ideas um, come to mind when you think of that, think of that object. Um, so yeah, so that's your, that's your little chance. Oh, there's also as well there, I didn't point it out, did I? There's this object here, which uh, it could be some kind of uh, speaking listening device. It's actually a fan heater, to be honest. But um, but you never know, do you? It could be anything. It could be anything. Um, so yeah, so so th those are the objects. There's a pair of uh, high tops as well, uh, um, Converse as well, so magic shoes or you know, could could be anything. Could be anything. So. That's your first challenge. Have a think and, uh, and, and maybe decide, you know, what, what kind of story are you going to build around, around that object? There's one, oh, there's one other object, though, which I didn't, uh, didn't show you. This, uh, this was bought for me when, uh, when I uh, wrote The Demon Collector, and uh, it's a gargoyle. It normally, these kind of things sit on the, on the tops of um, old cathedrals and castles and things like that and they stir down at uh, all the passers-by you know what if it came to life or you know what if it's a friendly gargoyle or you know or whatever yeah so maybe you want to write a story <laughs> about that okay i'll put him back up and you can have a look as i say i've i've, I've disturbed all those the objects now so at any minute any one of them could just come cr crashing off the shelf so that'll be exciting as well um okay so, um, that's your challenge. So, what I wanted to talk about um, really was was the um, the inspiration for my writing. And um, as a lot of authors will tell you, the inspiration for most people's writing or most authors' writing is reading. Now, um, I just uh, see if I can move the screen on a little bit. Um, let's see. Hi, John. Ah. It's me. I'm just. I'm just. Hi, <laughs> it's all right. Just, yeah. just to say thank you for setting that amazing challenge. I love all the objects that you've got on the bookshelf yeah. there. That gargoyle is is absolutely fantastic. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah, I was really yeah. chuffed with it. <laughs> can I can I just tell anybody watching um where they if they do write a story where they can send it to is that okay yeah um, yeah absolutely. yeah so if, if anybody does take up John's fantastic first challenge um and and write a story about one of the um or gets inspired by one of the objects that he has on his bookshelf if you just send it into us at lal at kirklees.gov.uk that would be absolutely fantastic um, and another thing to say, John, I, I don't even know if, if you know this, but your publishers have very kindly um, given us um, a copy of the Spybrarian um, as, ah, as a giveaway. Fantastic. So if anybody um, does take up one of your challenges this morning and sends us in a fantastic story, you know, they, they may be in with a chance of winning a copy of your book. So I can't think yeah. of a better reason, really, than, than to join in. So Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Good stuff. <laughs> so, yeah. Well done for that. New Clan Publishing. That's really good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's great. Um, okay. So, so you do you want your um, presentation up now, don't you? Yes. Please. Yeah, that's okay. great. Yeah. Okay, so I'll bring that in for you. 
Real? Okay. Right. So, so that's a copy of the spy library in there. Um, so I'm just moving this on. Okay, so your challenge. Yeah, have a look at the objects on the shelf. Write us down as many as you can. Or later on, you might think up a story. Send it on to uh, Library Adventures Live. And you never know, you might win a copy of the Spy Brewery. It doesn't have to be a spy story. It can be any kind of story you want it to be. Um, and that, you know, that's quite important because I'm writing about spies and libraries and things, but you might have completely different imagination to mine. And that's just great. OK, so we're going to talk a little bit about inspiration. And um, yeah, as I said, the um, the inspiration for all of all of my books and all of my writing has got to be reading. You know, if I wasn't a reader, I wouldn't be uh, a writer. And that goes back quite far. Um, when I was uh, when I was very young. OK, and uh, I know my hair's a bit mad today because I haven't had a haircut for, for weeks and it grows really fast. So and I, I, I've decided that like, when no one's looking at me, I can wear the I can grow these sides as well. So, you know, I'm going to end up looking like some kind of weird Elvis hippie clone thing. I don't know. Anyway, this goes back a long way, my terrible haircuts, because this was me when I was in probably in infant school um, or early primary school. And, uh, yeah, that's um, normally when, uh, you know, it's a big gang of us all watching this presentation and my picture from when I was little comes up, everyone's howling with laughter, but there you go. Um, so that was me when I was little. And uh, th those haircut haircuts were, like, compulsory in the olden days, um, you know, back in the 70s that was. And... Um, People used to just stick a rice crispy bowl over your head and cut around it, and uh, and then you pick the bits out and have them for your breakfast as you as you went to school. Um, so that was me. That was me when I was uh, when I was very young, very very young. And the thing about the reason I'm showing you that picture is because um, I was never a very keen reader when I was younger. When I was in like about year five, um, I, yeah, I kind of. Uh, I, I I fell right out of love with with reading, um, and there were lots of reasons for that. There weren't a lot of books in my house. Um, there were a few, but you know there weren't there weren't loads. But um, but also as well, I I was a bit of a slow reader, so you know I wasn't I didn't have any specific problems. But I was I wasn't the fastest reader in the class, and I don't know if you do. Uh, do a reading scheme like the Oxford Reading Tree, or um, or maybe um, the the Collins Big Cat series, or anything like that. But we had a we had a, a a reading scheme, and I was three books away from finishing the reading scheme. And of course, when you finish the reading scheme, you become a free reader. You can read whatever you like. Then now, just a little hint here: if you're on a reading scheme. Um, uh, you, you can still read whatever you like at home. You know, you can. It's it's not it's not illegal, um, and I'd very much recommend that you did read what you like as well, um, and just enjoy yourself. Um, but I was there, uh, three books away from the uh, finishing the reading scheme, and I can remember those books because the very last book was called Brave and Bold. And it was fantastic because it had a picture of a Viking with a big bushy beard and a big ax and a big horned helmet. And he was like, Bruh. and I was like, whoa, that's a fantastic story. That is now, that looks really good. But before I read that, I had to read another book, which was called Myths and Magic. And Myths and Magic was all about the sort of uh, ancient Greek uh, myths and legends. So it had a picture picture of a big Greek warrior on the front with a big bushy beard and a big bronze helmet and a sword. He's like, Arr! and that was fantastic as well. I was like, oh, that's so exciting. And then before I read that, the book before that was called The Five and a Half Club. And it was the worst book in the world. Now, I have to be a little bit 
cautious here because like it's terrible calling a book the worst book in the world there might be somebody out there who read the five and a half club and absolutely loved it i haven't met them yet um the thing about the five and a half club is that it was about these five kids and their little sister she was the half get it yeah i didn't think it was funny either um and uh, and she and basically they they got uh, a shed at the bottom of one of the kids gardens and uh, and they used that as their clubhouse and um and then they painted the shed pink um and that was it it was a story about five and a half kids painting a shed pink now i don't know about you i was a, a nine-year-old boy at the time and uh, it didn't hold a lot of um, a lot of interest for me at all i'm afraid and so i sat there with the five and a half club for ages and it just kind of put me off reading altogether i went to the teacher and and i said i don't like this book uh it's a bit boring and the teacher said well if you don't read that you're not going to read anything else and a little bit of me thought all right then i won't read anything else and i just stopped reading really um which was a real shame because you know there's so much kind of going on and you know there was so 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 many sorts of um, things i missed out on really uh, so many great books that I, I i didn't read um to be fair to that teacher my other memory of that teacher was him reading uh, the borrowers to us one sunny afternoon um and he had this really sort of deep welsh voice and he he, he read this this beautiful um beautiful reading of, of of the borrowers which is still a, a, a favorite book of mine um so yeah so there i was not reading and uh, or at least i thought i was wasn't reading but actually i was reading a lot of comics i was a big marvel comics fan um and i kind of uh, I, I i read all not not superman and, and, and batman really but more the kind of uh the, the marvel comics so spider-man the avengers all those characters that you see at the cinema um all of all of those really um and and i was a a, a big fan of the the one in the middle deathlock he was one of my favorites uh spider-man um man thing all the spooky ones really i quite like but i like the avengers and the guardians of the galaxy um all of those really as well now, i didn't think this was reading but in fact it was and i didn't realize until much later that um actually this reading had really really inspired my imagination um because i'll just show you something now this is deathlock he was my favorite character he was a kind of cyborg type robocop type character um and um i, re I really he's set in the future and i really like that um and if you look at the other book um uh, the, my first book next to it mortlock um you might notice a similarity there mort actually means death and so i got the title of my first book from a comic that i read when i was about 11 and that's quite weird the weird thing about it is that i i didn't realize it at all so i read a comic when i was about 11 and the title kind of went into my head and my brain absorbed it all and, and and it just sat there waiting to help me and that's how it helped me that comic if i hadn't read that comic i wouldn't be talking to you now and that mortlock book probably would never have been published so that's the kind of power of uh, of comics and uh, and reading um you know and there it is so i was reading comics and i didn't really realize it was uh, it was reading um and uh, yeah i, I kind of love the comics i love the uh, the superpowers and kian in uh, in uh, in spy Brary, and he's a bit miffed really because you know of all the superpowers that you could have like being a super reader it's it, he doesn't think it's cool at all um and uh, you know so again this might be another another idea another challenge for a story if you want if you want to uh, if you want 
to take it. Um, what power would you wish for, and why? Because that, you know that's a that's a that's always an interesting one, isn't it? Everyone's got a superpower. You see, I'd quite like to be able to fly, but the trouble is, I'm scared of heights. So if I was flying around, I'd be like ten, yay, three feet off the ground. Uh, I'd never go up there. It'd be too scary. So that'd be a bit pointless, wouldn't it? Yeah. So have a little think about what superpower you might uh, you might uh, want and and why and uh, and you know what what kind of things could you do with that superpower? That's always good fun as well. So have a little have a little think about that, and maybe you could write a uh, a short uh, a short story about when you suddenly get that power. What are the good things that happen? What are the bad things that happen? Um, okay. So I got to about year seven end of year seven and i wasn't reading much at all i was reading comics and that was good as we've seen and i kind of fell in with a friend who um who was also a comic collector but he was also a really keen reader of books and every saturday morning i used to uh, call for him knock on his door and he'd open the door and I'd say, oh, do you want to come around and uh, we'll, go, we'll go and buy some comics? And he'd go, yeah, 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 I've got to go to the library first. And I'd be like, oh, library, books, boring. Yeah, that would be me. But I'd follow him along and, um, and we'd end up, you know, in the library. And then I'd watch him choose a book. I don't know about you. I know librarians do a lot of this, watching people choose books. Um, but actually, in reality, watching people choose books is a bit boring itself. Okay. Um, I don't know if any of you have ever done that, but certainly watching people do, or watching your mate choose a book is really boring. And so I was stood there for ages. And, um, yeah, it just got a bit dull. And I remember standing there watching me mate like like that, and uh, and I kind of looked down, and there was a little table, and on that table was uh, a book, face up, and on that book, on the cover, was a picture of a cat in a spacesuit. A cat in a spacesuit, weird. And I picked the book up and I started to read it. I was like, cat in a spacesuit. Who writes a book about a cat in a spacesuit? That's ridiculous. What a stupid idea. I'll just read it to see how rubbish it is. And I started looking at this book and it was brilliant. It was actually a book called uh, A Breed to Come by a writer called Andre Norton. Andre Norton was a fantastic science fiction writer. She wrote fantasy. She was an American uh, lady. And, uh, and yes, she wrote these fantastic books. So good. And, uh, and I was just drawn into this book, and that was it then. I was just like a mad reader. I just read everything I possibly could. Books that were like really hard for me, um, books that were kind of like um, fantasy and series fiction. I even read books that I kind of missed out on when I was in primary school and uh, went back and read them as well. And I just went on this mad reading frenzy. And that, along with the comics, um, I ended up writing my own stories because, of course, when you've read a story, you think, oh, I've got an idea for another story. And, oh, and so I started writing that down and I, I was drawing my own comics. And, and that, that's really when I became a writer. I didn't get published um, for many, many years after that, but that was what started it, really. And it was a library that did that. And I'm always so grateful to um, librarians everywhere, really, um, because they must do that day in, day out. There must be people walking into libraries and getting inspired to read, and, and I hope that you guys will as well. Um, so there I was, reading and reading, reading, and um, of course, I didn't read, I'll be honest, I didn't read many spy books, but spies were kind of on the telly all the time. So if you look at that, um, the, the two men in the top, picture there uh, that was from a series called the uh, man from uncle and one of the guys is called napoleon solo and the other guy is called uh, Ilya kuryakin and they were um, 
They were secret agents that went and, and solved all kinds of mysteries. And of course, James Bond was um, w was uh, very popular uh, then, and it still is now, really. But um, but yeah, and I had that James Bond annual. It was quite tatty, but um, but I actually had that James Bond annual, and it had I I went to see the film um, Live and Let Die, and um, my mum took me. It was on my birthday, and um, and the story in the annual is a, is it's a cartoon of the book of Live and Let Die, and it struck me that the film and the book were different. And so again, that was something that I kind of learned that actually sometimes books are better than films, um, and that's certainly the case for if I can see it lying around. Yes. This is my favourite children's book of all time, Holes by Louis Sackar. I love this book. It's brilliant. Um, again, if you're kind of like year six, confident reader year five or year seven, read this book if you haven't already. It is fantastic. Um, and, yeah, the film of this book, it's good, but it's not as good as the book. And if you haven't read the book, don't watch the film first. Or read the book first. That'll be in your library as well, definitely. Um, so yeah, so that's uh, there were a lot of spies, lots of uh, secret agents. Um, Mission Impossible was a television series that was on as well. So so spies were kind of, kind of always there in the background. And of course, a lot of the comics that I read had uh, Shield, uh, you know, the the, the spy organisation in uh, in Marvel. Uh, that was all very much in the in the sort of back of my mind when I was. Uh, and I was thinking about these books. What I love about spies, or one of the things, is their gadgets. So spies have to be kind of secret, don't they? So, you know, if they're, if they're going to make a radio call, they need to have their, uh, their radio disguised. The man from UNCLE had this uh, radios disguised as pens, uh, so he'd talk into his pen. So, of course, when I was a kid, I'd go around talking into my pen, you know, pretending to be uh, Napoleon Solo. And, uh, yeah. Or your camera might be a watch, so you take a picture. In the Spybrarian, they've got a flying mobile library, which uh, I loved writing about. Um, and, yeah, so all, all of those. So, so again, what as a challenge, what you might do is have a look around you. There are all, probably all kinds of everyday objects. What could they be? Could they be cameras, communication devices, secret computers, um, things that help you fly? Uh, you know, all kinds of things. Maybe, you know, maybe a kind of mini telescope or, you know, to spy on people. You could make up some gadgets and um, and and, and sh show how they hide in everyday objects. And that would be quite good fun as well. Um, okay. So in the Spybrarian, there's an evil organisation. And often evil organisations in spy stories have got names names which are acronyms now an acronym is basically a word that if you it, the the, the le each letter in the word stands for another word so if you look at the screen there you've got the special executive for counterintelligence terrorism revenge and extortion and that spells spectre spectre was the evil organization in um James Bond, and um, yeah, acronyms are great. The uh, the evil organisation in uh, um, the Spybrarian is the Fellowship Against Reading of Texts. So, the Fellowship Against Reading of Texts. I'll leave you to work that out for yourself. Um, okay, so again, you might want to think up if you if you if you. You know, you, you, you're good at that kind of thing. You might want to think up your own acronym for an evil organization. Yeah. So you might want to uh, make up your own name for an evil organization and try and make it stand for something. That'd be that'd be quite fun. And, and I had great fun with the Spybrarian, just playing around with all these ideas, of gadgets and acronyms and, uh, oh, you know, all kinds of adventures that the, the characters would have. Um, oh, just before we go on to that. So, yeah, so I also had great fun with the 
with the sort of names of the um of the, of the characters as well so in there as well that you know there's key and reader and he, he's got two friends um one one lad called asif and um what a girl called prissy mcbeef prissy mcbeef is the most oppositional girl in the world so she's uh, she's she's quite uh, quite a grumpy person and uh asif uh, his nickname is velcro because he he doesn't have all of his uh, fingers. He had meningitis when he was a child, so he has to fasten everything with Velcro. And and the kind of point that I make in the book is that his friends call him that. His friends call him Velcro, but also his enemies do. And it's very much about the way that you say things and what you call people, uh, and and whether you know that's allowed. And yeah, so there's a, there's a, a kind of vein about just thinking about how you talk to people and things like that so and, and Asif wants to be um, wants to be a, a, an astronaut um, so he's got he's got high ambitions and uh, and maybe one day he will actually achieve those ambitions I like to think he would um, and uh, Prissy again Prissy me it actually means like somebody who's quite grumpy um, and if you've got a beef with someone, certainly around here, if you've like, if you got a beef with someone, it means like you, you, you've got an argument with them. So Prissy McBeef, was, you know, was, that was the idea of that. Um, so, yeah. So what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to read you um, an extract from the Spibrarian. And it's chapter two. And... Uh, the other thing you'll notice as well when you when you read this is, oh, and I can't find it. Oh yeah, some of the um, some of the writing oh, is in oh, so, yeah is in bold print there, so you can have quite fun, good fun reading this aloud as well. So uh, hopefully I'll do it justice. I'll just have a quick slurp of water. Okay, it's called the Great Library Robbery. Just to, just to build up to this, Kean has, has been told, he, he forgot his, uh, his homework and his English teacher, Mr. Vestibule, who's, um, who's quite horrible, um, he's a bit of a meanie, is Mr. Vestibule. And what he does as a punishment, as a punishment, this is, he makes uh, pupils who forget their homework go to the library and they have to get a book out called Improve Your Memory Skills. Um, and, um, of course, the whole kind of point about that is that, uh, that poor old Kian hasn't even got a library card. He, 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 you know, he, he doesn't get books from the library. So he's going to have to go to the library and steal the book. Otherwise, he's going to be in big trouble with Mr. Vestibule. Anyway, here we go. The Great Library Robbery. Chapter two, this is. By the time I got to the branch library, it was almost 12 o'clock and the place had emptied out. It was a funny little square building that reminded me of a lunchbox. The rows of books in the library glared at me and I glared back. Books are rubbish, I thought. Only losers read books. I thought about Anthony in his gruffalo suit and snorted. Dad, my real dad, didn't read books. He went fishing. Right then, I wished I was sitting on the canal side with him rather than crouching behind a bookcase in this stupid place. The smell of book covers mixed with the floor polish tickling my nose. A few low, comfy chairs lounged around beside the dark wooden bookshelves. The hum of the traffic outside seemed miles away. The librarian stood at the counter, the light reflecting off her pointy glasses. Her grey hair was all spiked up on top of her head and two dangly earrings swung back and forth as she glanced from one book to another. A gold brace bracelet rattled on her skinny wrist as she plonked a pile of world record books on the smooth surface. I had to admit, the bright red checked suit that she wore uh, made her look kind of cool, like a retired rock star. But she was ancient, older even than Mrs Jefferson, who lived opposite us and through digest to the pigeons in Hindenton Town Square. She probably wouldn't even notice if I grabbed a book and ran for it, I thought. Even if she did notice, she wouldn't be able to catch me. 
There was nobody else in the library to stop me either. The old librarian picked up another pile of books and files. I noticed a small bottle of blue liquid on the top of the pile. Improve your memory skills sat waiting for me on the bookshelf. It was just as well, really. I couldn't have walked up to the old biddy at the counter and said, excuse me, but I'm looking for a book to steal. Yes, what about memory skills? I felt awful. I'm not in the habit of stealing things, but I just couldn't bear the thought of Mr. Be Vestibule tearing me off a strip on Monday. Plus, he'd probably keep me in too. There was no choice. Taking a deep breath, I reached for the book, ready to stuff it under my jacket and run for it. At that moment, the library door creaked open and in walked Martin Marvello, the famous, local, best-selling, award-winning children's author. I couldn't believe my eyes, but it was him all right. He'd visited our primary school when I was in year six and his picture was all over the school for weeks. And there could be no mistaking the yellow trousers and that jacket he always wore. He looked weird and walked like a robot or like he was sleepwalking. The librarian stopped and frowned at Marvello. Hello, Martin, she said, peering at him. Are you all right? I ducked behind a bookcase and peered through a gap in the books at the two of them. Martin Marvello pulled a gun from his pocket and pointed it at the librarian. I must kill Paige Turner, he said in a weird voice. He sounded like he was repeating an order. It reminded me of the mayor giving her speech. The librarian blinked. I beg your pardon. I must kill Paige Turner, he said again. Really, Martin, guns are not allowed in the library. The librarian said, put that away. Someone will get hers. Or worse, you might damage a book. Bam, the gun went off and my eyes widened as at the same time, the old lady ducked under the counter, dodging the bullet. Then she popped up again. Martin, this is no way for a famous local best-selling award-winning children's author to behave, she said. And her voice was really shrill now. And mind the displays. Bam, she ducked again and then popped her head up once more. I'm warning you, Martin, she said. I'll take action if I have to. Bam, bam. Bullets smacked into the varnished counter, sending splinters of wood everywhere. Right, that does it, the librarian snapped. And still holding the pile of books and the bottle, she leapt up, vaulting over the desk. She flew forward, spin ice, her dangly earrings rattling and a biro flying out of her suit pocket. hi -ya! Her legs stretched out straight. She landed spinning like a ballet dancer and wham! Planted a stunning roundhouse kick to the side of Martin Marvello's head. He staggered back into a display of picture books. The gun spun off into the air, landing safely in the large print section. But as she had jumped, she had dropped the books and files she'd been holding. And the bottle. The books tumbled left and right, smacking on the floor. The files spun off the corners, sorry, off into the corners of the library, sliding along the polished floor with a hiss. And the bottle whirled high in the air. I watched it as if in slow motion. It was small and fluorescent lights shimmered through the blue liquid contents, reminding me of those adver advertisements for sunny Mediterranean holidays. Then things spinned up, speeded up, and the bottle described a perfect arc through the air towards me. I reached up to catch it. I fumbled as the glass slid through my fingers. I gasped as the bottle shattered right on my forehead. Stars splintered before my eyes, and a warm, wet liquid stung my face, filling my nose and mouth, making me cough and splutter. The liquid burnt my skin, and the inside of my mouth, my nostrils, even that funny little bit between your nose and your top lip. What is that called then? I lay on my back, staring up at the lights in the ceiling. Everything looked blue at first, but slowly the stinging stopped and my sight returned to normal. I blinked. Martin Marvello and the librarian were engaged in a deadly martial arts face-off.
The librarian leapt high into the air and backflipped away from Martin Marvello's deadly kick. Then she landed and planted a powerful punch right on the author's nose. Pow! Martin Marvello staggered backwards, crashing into a glass cabinet. Mind the local history display, the librarian screamed <coughs> and brought a karate blow down to his on his shoulder. How did you get so good at Kung Fu, Martin? Research for my best-selling Ninja Wallabies series. Die, Martin Marvello said in his monotonous robotic voice. He staggered towards her, his face bruised, his jacket torn at the shoulder. The librarian stood quietly in front of him, brown shoes planted firmly on the ground. I never liked those books. I much preferred the war gerbil books she said, blocking his blow and burying her right fist into his stomach. Oof! He doubled up, gasping as the breath left his body. With a sharp left uppercut to his chin, the librarian put him on the floor. Martin Marvello lay groaning, but still. With a puzzled frown and a grunt of dissatisfaction, the librarian straightened her tweed suit. Then she turned and looked directly at me. Are you all right? she said. Then her eyes widened and her hand flew to her mouth. Oh, my word. Did the bottle hit you? I clambered to my feet. It hurt between my eyes where the bottle had hit me and I felt a bit dizzy. But otherwise, I felt all right. Yeah. Yes, I said. It really stung, but it's OK hey, now. The librarian looked from Martin Marvello to me and then back again. The famous local best-selling award-winning children's author wasn't going anywhere. She turned to me and grabbed a book from the shelf close to him. Read this, she said. What? I stammered. No, no I, I don't like reading. I... The librarian went pale. Small red spots appeared on her wrinkled cheeks. Never mind all that nonsense, young man. Just read. I stared down at the open book. My head spun and then the words seemed to rush to me. I felt as if I was going up in an elevator. It felt like my brain had just been put on fast forward. Suddenly, I knew it was a book all about jet engines and how they work. The compressed air is then sprayed with fuel, and I, and I zoomed through the text. Electric sparks light the mixture. Burning gases expand, blast out through the nozzle at the back. I couldn't stop. Finally, the librarian slammed the book shut. I felt like I'd been dragged off a roundabout going at 60 miles an hour. I wobbled a little. She grabbed my arm to steady me. I rubbed my head. What happened? I said. Why do I suddenly know how a jet engine works? The librarian just shook my hand. My name's Paige Turner, SLS, she said. Martin Marvello started to rise up, but Paige Turner leapt over and gave him a sharp blow to the top of his head. Welcome to the dangerous world of books. There you go. That's chapter two of The Spybrarian. Um, so I hope you enjoy that. And uh, as I say, when you get to your library, you might be able to uh, get some copies of that. Fingers crossed. Um, and if you do some writing, you might be able to win a copy of it as well. So that's great. So I'm going to um, leave it there and um, maybe invite if anyone's typed in any questions or got in touch on the chat board and um, see if anyone uh, wants to know anything about the books or about me as an author or whatever. Yeah, hi, yeah, lovely. Hi, just just to say thank you so much for that. That that was super. The presentation and and the reading at the end, so so much in there. And I absolutely love the name of the librarian in the book, Paige Turner. Oh, I think that's yeah. absolutely fantastic. I, I just wish I had like the energy that she does to be able to leap <laughs> over the library counter and do backflips and things around the library. But oh gosh, <laughs> possibly yeah, you not. Deny but... now, you deny it, but like, obviously, being a librarian, you wouldn't say anything else, would you? You know, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, we'll leave it at that. Uh, no, that that was brilliant. Thank you. Yeah, and and you, you're reading. You just made the book sound so exciting, and I can vouch for the fact that it is. And it just gets more exciting from there on in. So yeah, fantastic. Um, so we have had um, a few comments and and questions coming, John. So I'll I'll bring a a couple yeah. of those up if that's okay, and yeah, um, yeah. we'll have a look. Um, I did say at the beginning if anybody just wanted to type in and, and let us know they were watching, I would I would give them a quick shout out. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've had June. She just typed in hiya. So as promised, Thank we'll you. say hiya to June. Hi, June. Thanks for Hello, watching. June. 
Um, Christina has said that she loved reading E.T. and Ghostbusters and Gremlins after seeing the film. It's great to read them before too and see the differences. So, yeah, I think that's in, in response to your, your comment yeah. about um, what, watching or, or not watching Holes before reading the book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. true. Yeah, I mean, I, the Star Wars, I uh, when I was – because I was uh, quite young when Star Wars came out uh, the first time. And, um, yeah, the, the, I read read the Star Wars books. So yeah, that kind of it, it can work both ways, but you know, but but I I'd stand by it. Do not watch the film of Holes until you've read the book because it's great. Anyway, just a bit of a fan, really. But <laughs> oh, good stuff. And Christina as well. She's also said she absolutely loved the reading and the award-winning author fun. So yeah, thank you, Christina. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, and we've had we have had some other comments as well to say excellent, can't wait to read the book, brilliant. Oh, I've got to go, but I'll come back and listen to the rest later. So yeah, yeah lots of people enjoying it this morning. So it was yeah. fabulous. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, one one question that that um I had, John, if it's okay to ask, I I just wondered. I know you you talked a bit about your your journey and and how, sort of how your eventual love of reading inspired you to to write and and mm. obviously now to to become a, an, an amazing author but I just wondered did did you always want to be an author or was there ever mm. sort of a point in your life when when you thought about following another career path or Yeah. Well, I think I think grow, growing up where I did sort of on the Wirral um, I, I lived in a, a lovely place called Easton but um and and um, but you know I, I lived in a council house and and we didn't have many books in the house and the idea of kind of that someone like me would be would write books and be an author was like nah you know it, you just didn't do it um, so it wasn't so much that I didn't you know I didn't want to be an author it's just that it just never occurred to me that it was something that. I people like me were allowed to do, um, and um, and so I enjoyed reading and I enjoyed writing the stories, but they were very much there just for the um, just for my own entertainment. And and the the guy the the lad who um, who I was uh, who went to the library with on a Saturday morning, um, we just used to write stories and swap them and like crit each other's stories but that's as far as it went really um so so no i never really had any ambitions to be a writer uh, until much later I, I i was a teacher for many years um i worked in high schools and in special schools as well um and and then it must have been 2006 i think it was and I had got a place in the London Marathon. And it was around, yeah, so it was around about this time of year. Um, I, I, I'd been doing a lot of running because getting outside's great and, you know, a bit of exercise is really important and all of that sort of stuff. And, and I'm, a, I'm a terrible person because whenever I do something, I kind of, I, I like to do it to the nth degree, you know, so I, so I go for a jog and the next, oh, I could run a marathon, you know, why do you do that? You know, why don't you just enjoy going for a jog? But it's just the way I am really. So, um, so I was training for the London Marathon and it was, it was around about February 2006 and it was snowing. So yeah, very, you know, this time of year, there was thick snow. And of course I pulled back the curtains, looked out and thought, Deep snow, great, great for a 10 mile run. That'll be fantastic. Like, you know, everyone else would just stay in bed or make a snowman or whatever, but no. So off I went and uh, yeah, seven miles into this 10 mile run, I put my foot into a snow drift and there was like a curb underneath it and I broke my ankle basically. And then I had to walk back three miles because no one could drive out and get me. The snow was really deep. Um, and yeah, so I, it was a really bad break and I ended up with my foot up for six weeks. Now, one of the other things about running and about those kind of exercise going for a walk is that it allows you time to think. And so when I had been training for the London Marathon, I'd had all these crazy ideas for stories because I've been reading a lot of ghost stories and things. And um, 
and because reading does that to you you know it plants ideas in your head as i was running along i was making my own story up and because i ended up with my foot up in a cast and uh, i got bored really really quickly um i ended up writing my first book which was mortlock and i wouldn't have written that again unless i broke my ankle so it was actually the broken ankle that gave me the time to write and then again it was one of those things where i thought i've just written like a story that's like seventy thousand words long <clears throat> I need to do something with that and so i sent it off to get published and it got rejected loads and loads of times but that made me think why what's wrong with it what you know why isn't it good enough to be published and so that set me down another route where i started to find out how to improve my writing how to learn more you know all the editing skills and you know and find out about how the publishing world works so so yeah it was it was more a kind of challenge, really, after um, after breaking my ankle and writing this story. That that's kind of what you know, what kind of made me want to get published, really. Which is you know, so yeah, it was a strange kind of uh, route to it. Um, but yeah, and then once it did get published, again, just because of my background and and you know, and just because yeah, you, everyone just sees themselves as a you know ordinary person and you know I, I kind of type my stories and look out and there's people walking the dogs in the streets and you know um yeah you you don't think that those things can occur to you and so it took me a long time to um you know to to realize so i remember my first first kind of um event really author event with a with a publicist from bloomsbury and it was all very you know and there were loads of other authors there and i went around buying all their books and getting them all signed and everything and i came back to the publishers publicist and said oh, i love getting books signed by real authors it's great isn't it and he was like john you are a real author you know like, oh, nah. <laughs> can't believe that so yeah it, it's um but yeah so it wasn't something that I, I had this burning desire until i'd written that book and then i think i guess it's it's in a bit like prissy mcbeef in the in if someone says no you can't do that i'm kind of like why not you know <laughs> what, what what's going to stop me you know um so yeah it, maybe it was the challenge really that, that was set by that those rejections that just made me spur on a bit you know yeah so that's a oh. long answer to a short question <laughs> <laughs> no that that's good that's great it was really interesting thank you mm -hmm. and i get yeah just interesting about what what you said at the beginning like you you would have thought that that being an author would would never have been an option for, for you but actually because you kind of started going down that path and got interested in writing and, and you never gave up you, you've ended up where you are today as a, as a well a fantastic award-winning author so yeah, yeah good for you so I guess it is a message of of, of you know ha have those dreams and and follow yeah. your dreams and never give up and and hopefully yeah. eventually you, you will get there yeah and, and read you know reading yeah. just you know you, I, I don't I haven't met an author a successful author uh who isn't a reader you know even you know even at some level some are, some that i've met are voracious readers they read read loads and loads others kind of read in between when they're writing books but they're all readers because that's where you get your you're not stealing ideas but you you know you get your inspiration and 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 yeah and and, and kind of yeah, just to put you back in touch with what it's all about, really. And and again, you know, the 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 addition to that story uh, about the library, you know, which is all it's all true. That um, I uh, later on I joined a um, a kind of a, a writing group that was based at a, a Bebbington Library, which is a big cent central library in the sort of south of Wirral. And uh, there was a writers group there, and I got to meet authors who would come in and do author talks and that was all as a teenager really and again it was all you know it was just libraries making that making that able to happen so again anyone out there who's who you know who's a keen uh reader and and you know wants to write their own stories you know that like you'll you'll have all kinds of events i'm sure you know 
for well this kind of thing really but you know for, for young people and also as well i was i was in my 40s by the time i you know um wrote a wrote a book and got published but again nowadays with the internet and you know with with platforms like wattpad and um, you know there's a there's amazon and there's other other platforms as well you know you can even at a, a young age you can write something and publish it and and get a readership you know wattpad's great for for uh, you know for teen writers um who want to build up a, a fan base and and you know you do your own covers and everything it's really good um so yeah there's loads of opportunities for people just to get out and write but the foundation of that is definitely reading you know you, you, i can't i don't see how you can do it without reading you know. Oh, that's fantastic. So the message is read, read, and then read some more. Yeah, brilliant. Absolutely. Thanks, John. Do you know, we could we could sit here and, and talk about this all, all day, couldn't we? Know, we want to <laughs> yeah, well, I know. Sadly, I've, I've just had a look at the clock as well. And well, we've, we've gone a bit over our hour now, but you know, not not to worry. But I think if it's okay with you, what, what I'll do is I'll just do a, a quick recap of the challenges that you've said. Um, yeah. Remind people watching where they can, they can send their stories and, and acronyms into us um and then are you okay just to hang on while i quickly tell people what, what's coming up next week as well yeah, yeah? and then we'll, we'll say our goodbye oh, okay lovely thank you john so um it's it well just just really to say a big thank you to you john for this morning it's been absolutely fantastic um a, a wonderful presentation a wonderful reading from a, a fantastic and, and funny book um and just brilliant the fact that you've advocated so strongly for, for libraries and reading this morning we couldn't have asked for a better session really so thank you ever so much um and if you've if you've been watching um you will know that john has set um a few challenges for you this morning so one of his challenges at at the beginning was to have a go and try and write a story perhaps based on um one of the objects um that he has on his bookshelf there you can just see a, a few of them there my personal favorite was the the gargoyle um i might actually have a try at writing a story um inspired by that myself i think that's fantastic yeah so um you also um asked us what uh superpower would we like to have if we could yeah. have any superpower what would that be um and then near the end you brought up um an acronym for us and asked if we could possibly think um of our own acronyms so lots of activities there for us, us to have a go at which is absolutely fantastic uh so if you do want to rise to any of john's challenges uh, send your stories and acronyms into us at our usual email address, which is lal at kirklees.gov.uk. And if you remember, I also told you near the beginning that John's publishers have very, very kindly given us a copy of his brand new book, The Spybrarian, as a prize. So if you do send um, any of your competition entries into us, you may very well win your own copy of The Spybrarian, which is just fantastic, I think. So brilliant. Thank you ever so much, John. Okay, yeah. so oh, can I just just mention as well? Anyone who's maybe watching this later or or whatever or using it at home, there there, there are some resources based on the Spybrarian at, at LoveReadingForKids.com. The four is like a number four, so maybe I could pass that on to you and and you could put it in the notes at the bottom of the YouTube. Yeah, um, absolutely. That, that would be brilliant. Yeah. Or oh, we could maybe yeah. put a link to that on our um, website on the library. Okay, yeah. So I'll get that over to you. Yeah. Then, yeah, 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 fantastic. That's wonderful, John. Mm -hmm. Lovely. Thank you ever so much. <laughs> Right. Okay, guys. So next week, uh, we've got another um, brilliant Library Adventures live session. They, ju they just keep on coming and getting better and better. We've had a, a wonderful time this morning. Next week, we've got Sophie Anderson uh, reading from and talking about her book, The Castle of Tangled Magic. So this is a story all about a 13-year-old girl called Olia who steps through a magical doorway and discovers another land, a land tangled by magic. And Olia learns that she is destined to save this land, but time is running out and with her friends and family in danger, she has to search for the magic inside herself to save everything and everyone she loves. So that sounds like a, a really exciting thing to look forward to for yeah. next week. So we look yeah, forward to that. Good. 
Yeah. <laughs> okay, so it just remains to say again, thank you ever so much, John, for a wonderful morning. Uh, we'll say goodbye to everybody and hope to see you all again next week for some more Library Adventures Live. Okay, oh, so thanks, John. <laughs> Take care. See you later. Bye. Bye.